Welcome to this Trimble Business Center video tutorial. In this video, we will talk about the reconstruction or the relative adjustment. This is done by uh, running the adjust photo stations in TBC. And to run this, we need to have um, a valid information about uh, the camera, the focal length, from the camera and the pixel size and also a valid height above ground, which was automatically generated by importing the GXL file here from this X100 dataset, or if you run this through uh, the import UI, then you also get these informations and can start now the reconstruction. To run the relative adjustment or the adjust photo stations, you need to have drone images that overlap to each other. In our case, if you want, you could, for example, change the thumbnail size of our images. When you go to the project settings, you can go here to this wheel, project settings, and then you can go to view. And here there's a referenced image entry and you see a viewing distance. And if we enter for the viewing distance, the approximate height above ground, so these 130 meters, then let's do this here. And then hit enter and then say okay then we will now see our footprints are drawn approximately in the size how they would be in uh, in the real overlap um, scenario and therefore we see these images overlap each other of course the problem is we don't see now anymore the individual images which is for other uh, reasons interesting for example if there are rotation errors in it but this is now a little bit more advanced. I just wanted to show here how you could approximately reproduce the overlap uh, of these images to each other. For display is issues, I will go back and change the size again as previous. When we select adjust photo stations, then we see the panel on the right side appear. And we also see a text that is in the adjustment tab written. So here TBC uh, checks what quality of our uh, positions, our drone images uh, are existing. And we remember the GNSS is unknown. It has not a high quality. It's not precise. And therefore um, the GNSS cannot be used like control points in the adjustment. And we will only perform a relative adjustment for this data set. The relative adjustment is a highly automated process, so you can just hit the adjust button and then it would run. But before we do this, let's talk a little bit some general things, what is happening here in the background. So when we start uh, just photo stations, we are generating tie points. A tie point is a measurement that tries to represent the same position or the same feature or whatever you want to call this uh, this uh, point on the ground in the real world in different images. That means we have here, let's say, a crossing of a road and this one exists in the red image, in image one. It exists also in image two, in image three and in image four. That means we can have measurements or observations for the same object four times and of course, in different locations of each photo. That means in the red image, this measurement is far on the red side, on the right side. And in the blue one, in the image four, this measurement is far on the left side of the photo. Or in the green one, it's almost in the center in this case. So this tie point is, as it's called, tying the images together. So we have this measurement for example here and then this measurement is having a connection with the image on the left side on the right side but also when the drone flies here along this line we call it a strip so then we have here three measurements along the strip but then also when the drone comes back it has a cross overlap so in this case here the overlap between these strips and so we hopefully also can find the same object in the other images here 
in different locations of these single photos. So this tie point in this case has multiple measurements. And this is good because if I have only two measurements, then it's like a um, ray intersection. And so when you have only two measurements, then you have one ray intersection, but you cannot prove perhaps if there's a good or wrong one. But if you have a third measurement, then you have a third ray. And so this uh, ray intersection with three rays, then we have some reliability. We can prove if these first two ray rays are also intersecting at the same part where my third ray comes in. And the same, of course, if you have four, five or six rays going into the same position, this helps us to verify that this is a good measurement. In general, we want to have for each photo tie points equally spread it over the whole image area. So if I have 100 tie points, for example, this image 135 here, and all these 100 tie points would just be here around this red dot. This is not what we want. We want to have them in the lower left and the upper left in the upper right, lower right area of the photo, because then we can afterwards also um, help to stabilize the orientation of the whole image. And also the measurements itself help us to make a good camera calibration, defining the distortions, for example, of the camera model, because then we have everywhere over the whole sensor, because the sensor of our drone was capturing this photo, so we can then define the distortions in a better way. Depending from our overlap, so for example here, we have only a 60% overlap in the flight and 20% between the strips. Um, this is not what we would recommend for drone data. So for drone data, typically you have a higher overlap. Let's say, for example, an 80-80 overlap. That means one position here can be seen from 16 possible images because 16 images have a possibility to look into this area. And so one observation or one type point can have up to 16 possible measurements coming, of course, from 16 different images. So depending from the overlap, you can have a variety of different possibilities of measurements. So for example, with the previous one, a maximum of six measurements would only be possible for one type point. Here, up to 16 measurements per type point are possible. If you fly 70-70%, then you are somewhere in between. So something around 10 to 12 measurements per point maximum are then possible. Depending from the project, we also have different ground sample distance. The ground sample distance is depending from our camera. So from our camera, we have the focal length, uh, which is uh, in our case, six millimeter. And we have a flying height above ground. So in our case, this is 130 meter. And then we get a specific ground sample distance. So for us, this will be 4.4 centimeter here. This is just an example from a different slide, uh, just to show if you fly lower, of course, then the ground sample distance changes. And therefore also the resolution on the ground. Uh, that means, for example, if I look at the face and then on my left side, one pixel has perhaps one centimeter uh, or, or half centimeter accuracy, then I could represent a face with this accuracy. And if I uh, go closer with my camera, then each pixel on my sensor has a higher resolution. And then I can see more details in my content. So for our uh, X100 dataset, we can now calculate the ground sample distance. And what we need in this case is um, a formula. And the formula is very simple. The ground sample distance is equal to the flying height above ground divided by the focal length uh, and then multiplied by the pixel size. And these values we can extract so in the JXL file, we find the pixel size and the focal length. So when we open the JXL, we can see it here. So this is our pixel size. This is written in the JXL. 
And also we have our focal length that is here part of the JXL file. So let's take these two values. And then the height above ground, you have just seen, we have entered them. So in our case here, I entered 130 meters. And therefore, then the ground sample distance can be calculated. And in our case, it's 4.4 centimeter or 0.044 meter for our data set. So one last thing to mention is then the permit selection. So that means the 2.04 micrometer or these 4.4 centimeter GSD, they are related to the original size of our drone photos. Very often, and also here in TBC, we are not running the type point extraction on the full resolution original image. And the reason is really because of the pixel size. So if you look at these 2.04 micrometer of size, then, and this is now a little bit going into advanced, but just to be aware of it, um, if we take now this value and we run some image matching uh, algorithms, let's take for an example, the feature-based matching, which is a very common algorithm available in photogrammetry. We say we can measure about a third pixel accurate. And if we take these 2.04 micrometers and we divide it by three, then we reach 0.68 micrometer accuracy on the sensor. And typically we say that most sensors in the world cannot be calibrated this accurate. That means even if you would send the camera into a laboratory and they would run here in the laboratory a camera calibration, they would typically not give you a protocol where they um, agree that they calibrated the camera each pixel its um, geometrical position based on some distortions and stuff like that, that they really can define it by less than one micrometer. Uh, very often even two micrometers is a criteria for even photogrammetric cameras in the world that are only uh, defined in these laboratories with the accuracy. So that means, and feature-based matching is now a more common, but the newer ones like SIFT operator or uh, some other pixel-based orientated matching algorithms, they can reach a fifth to a tenth of a pixel. And therefore we go really down below these two micrometers or one micrometer. And that means if we would run all the type one extraction with this camera sensor uh, on the highest resolution of our image, we don't can extract really the full potential out of it. So typically what you do is you generate pyramids um, a lower resolution of the of the highest pyramid. That means from this 2.04 micrometers, we would go one pyramid level up, and then it would be double the size, so 4.08 micrometers. And then you can, of course, extract, so every value becomes double the size. So in our feature-based matching, if we would run it on the 4.08 micrometer, then we would reach something around 1.3 micrometers. And this is what we can reach typically also with the sensors. And therefore it makes sense to run the whole type one extraction or this reconstruction or this in TBC called adjust photo stations, not on the full resolution, but on the first pyramid level. Just to be aware and to know that this is also something happening in the background. And it means also that our ground sample distance on the First pyramid level is not 4.4 centimeter, but it's 8.8 .8 centimeter. So I hope this helped you to understand what happens in the background when you hit here the adjust button. So we hit adjust and now this type one extraction with this overlap tries to find these type points between the images. And when this is finished, we will then take a look at the um, the report but this is not part of this video so thank you for watching this video and hopefully see you soon in one of the upcoming videos goodbye